ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Stavanger. Would you please remain seated? You may now switch on. Hi there, guys, and welcome back again to the Brazilian Expat. Well, it's been um, it's been uh, quite some time since my latest upload. That's just the name of the game nowadays, as uh, this pandemic doesn't seem to to want to end. Yeah, I thought I'd give you just a little, you know, recap of what's been going on these uh, these last weeks or you know months, because it's yeah, I believe it's been well over a month now since since my latest upload. Um, so you can see me. I've got the Norwegian flag behind me here. Uh, today is the 17th of May, which is uh, Norwegian's Constitution's Day. And uh, yes, I am back in Norway and I'm not in Norway to celebrate Constitution Day. <laughs> uh, I was actually hoping just to just to stay at home in Brazil. However, um, because of the current situation, uh, the rules you know, for, you know, coming into the country, into Norway and also into Brazil, everything, I think in, I, you know, I speak for the entire world that the rules constantly change, you know, as we get new waves of uh, infections and, uh, you know, the government, they, they keep, you know, adapting and trying to adapt. So when you get these new waves or the, these new spikes in, uh, in uh, you know, COVID-19 cases, well, the government usually acts accordingly, you know, and that's what's happened here in Norway. Um, just, a, you know, a month ago, we had a huge spike in, in cases here in Norway. And so the government, they really clamped down on, um, on the entry uh, requirements. You know, the initial result of that, unfortunately, is um, because in my business, uh, I do work in the oil sector here in Norway. The problem there is that a lot of my colleagues who work, you know, who are foreigners, a lot of them come from the UK, from Lithuania, from the Netherlands, uh, Denmark, France, Italy, you know, all over. And uh, with these new restrictions, um, it has been a real issue just getting, you know, all the workers over here to work, all the engineers, you know, just get them over here to Norway to work. And um, of course, we have a lot of Norwegian employees also. The majority of, of course, are Norwegian, but uh, we do have a lot of specialists uh, coming overseas. And the issue now is with these new requirements, with these all of these restrictions, is that we don't have enough staff, you know, to come to work, basically, because they're all stopped at the border. Uh, there's new requirements, there's new documents that need to be processed. And... Um, so what initially happened is uh, my boss uh, here in Norway, she, she actually, she just begged me to come back to, back to Norway because the initial plan was to, to stay at home. You know, a couple of episodes back where I actually uploaded a video of me just trying to get back to Brazil and that entire ordeal with all these testing and everything. And in that video, I actually said, well, I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna stay in Brazil, and I'm actually gonna just ride it out in Brazil, you know, without any pay, or oh, I do have my business in Brazil. But the thing is I had saved up a lot of money because I've been working Christmas, New Year's uh, extra, you know, doing overtime and just, you know, putting in the hours and just, um, I, I basically spent over two months at home here, in, or at home uh, here in Norway, um just working my butt off you know just to save up enough money and the initial plan was to stay in brazil and just ride it out you know and and not come back to work here in norway um uh, until things have improved but of course my boss she she called me and um it was like a really short notice and they were really struggling to get people from overseas into work and you know me holding a norwegian passport obviously i can come in do my quarantine and then go straight to work so so last minute, I really just had to jump on a flight and just and just go, basically. So that is uh, the short version. So there hasn't been time because I already spent um, some time working offshore. It's been seriously busy. You know, I've been working my butt off again. And um, there's just not been any time to think about uploading or making any content whatsoever to my channel, unfortunately. So I know this channel, you know, my channel is supposed to be about Brazil, obviously, but uh, I thought I'd just talk a little bit of, 
you know, what's, what's the situation here in Norway? And later on, I'll talk about what's going on in Brazil. Because I think there are some of you I know who do, uh, you know, expats, who do a lot of traveling, who are dependent on travel, who, who really need to travel, who, um, who I think can relate with, you know, my issues and everything that I'm going through uh, these days. And um, of course, when I, when I initial, initially, uh, you know, got the call from my boss that I had to go back to, back to Norway to work, um, of course, all the requirements had changed. Like I, like I previously mentioned that the government, they, they keep, you know, adapting according to the cases and, and what's going on, you know, with the COVID situation. So basically, uh, when I had to go back, um, I did do, I had to do a PCR test, obviously. Um, this was like a normal PCR test that was done 72 hours prior to my departure back to Norway. And when I say departure, that's like the first leg. And uh, it's actually, it starts off with a domestic flight from Fortaleza into Sao Paulo. They actually demand to see the documents, you know, even on your first leg, even if it's a domestic flight, because they can see it's a continuous flight. So they actually check it in Fortaleza. So I had to do this in my hometown of Fortaleza. I, uh, I went there. It's actually pretty cheap in, in Brazil. I mean, here in Norway, it's just crazy expensive. It's just ridiculous here. I think the, um, the PCR test that I need to do is around 250 bucks. You know, US, I'm talking US dollars. While in, you know, in Brazil, it's basically 30 bucks. So <clears throat> it's quite, quite affordable. And they do have a lot of these private clinics all over. So that was really no issue at all. You know, I went in, uh, they swabbed my nose. I think it was just 24 hours later, they give you a link and a password, you know, a, a username, and you just can go in and you can retrieve it electronically. And just to make sure, I actually asked them if they could translate it to me in English, and they did that, no problem at all. So, so I'm actually, I, I was pleasantly surprised at, um, at the, uh, the service, you know, offered. I mean, this is obviously a private clinic and um, I was actually surprised about the service that, uh, that they offered there in Brazil. It was fast, it was easy, it was cheap, no problem at all. You know, there was uh, no, no queue, no waiting in line. Everything was just really quick. And the cool part is, it's a shame that I didn't really record it <clears throat> because everything happened so fast. You know, I got the phone call from my boss and I just had to run. I had to rearrange everything really quickly. Uh, if I had more time, I would have documented it, but it's basically like a drive through You come in, drive your car, and it's, you just drive your car inside a tent. You don't even need to step outside. You just show your documents. You pull your mask down. They swab your nose. You get, you know, a card with a username and, and password and everything. Then you, and, you, you know, you, you pay with your credit card and off you go. And uh, 24 hours later, you know, you just access the site that they give you on the card put in your username and password and voila, you know, negative test. And uh, I asked for this translation. So, and this clinic, there's several clinics around the city. This clinic was actually pretty close to the airport. So on the same day of my departure, I actually just went super early, went into this clinic, ran inside and I got, you know, a copy of the, uh, the English uh, certificate just saying that everything was negative. Came to the airport, you know, they asked, this was the first thing they asked for. I showed them that, no problem. I went, uh, got on the plane. When I came to Sao Paulo, because the Norwegian authorities, I mean, this 72 hour test, that's actually just to do a transfer in the Netherlands, in Holland, <laughs> all right? So they demand that. But to enter an entry into Norway, you also need like, um, this uh, antigen um, rapid test some some people call it the lamp test but i think it's just normally just called like an antigen test or something like that now and uh, basically that was another 30 bucks you can do that at the airport it usually takes around three hours no problem at all because i had like a six hour layover in sao paulo so i went you know i collected my bags um went straight to uh to this clinic, which is, you know, in the departure hall, uh, international departure hall in Sao Paulo. It was a fast process, you know, you just go there, you pay, and then uh, you get a number, you know, you sit and wait, they call you up, you go inside, they swab your nose, do your test. I got to check in, 
checked in everything waited in the uh, departure hall you know in the um, by the gate actually it was in the lounge and um, yeah two hours later I went and checked it I got a like a, I got a message on my phone and uh, voila negative test no problem so at the gate they asked for everything so I showed them the English translation for the PCR test and then the other one the uh, antigen negative test I just showed them on my phone the result and off I went um, so that was pretty straightforward <laughs> It's coming into Norway. I mean, that's when, you know, that's when it just started to get a little bit ridiculous. So what happened is uh, in the Netherlands, you know, the transfer, nobody asked for any documents at all. That was fine. So I had a, I had a quite short later, layover. I had around three or four hours. Got on my plane to Norway. The final stretch, when I actually landed in Norway, <laughs> the pilot actually came on and just announced that there was another flight who j had just landed like five minutes you know before us and uh, they wanted us to stay put inside the airplane until they processed every single passenger i believe this was coming from aberdeen in scotland in the uk and um, they actually want to process this entire plane and then they would let us off and uh, of course uh, we sat over an hour in the inside the plane before we were actually allowed to disembark we had a flight uh, expected this embarking uh, to start soon um, yeah we we're also uh, quite frustrated about the situation. Uh, we might have filed a complaint about uh, this uh, regulation anyway, but uh, there's nothing we can do about it. Uh, but the good news is uh, I do expect the disembark to start soon now. <clears throat> when we finally disembarked, of course, I was sitting in the front. Uh, I was expecting, you know, to just to get processed quickly and do the test because you need to do a test upon arrival as well. So I came to the immigration officer, I showed my passport, everything. And um, what he basically said is, no, 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 you, you, need to, uh, you need to stay at a hotel and quarantine for seven days. But then he said, so now I need you to step back in the line and sit down and wait because we need to process all the passengers and then we will collect you and we will take you to do your PCR test and then you can go to your hotel. And I would say, hey, you're joking me, right? <laughs> you gotta be kidding. But uh, no, that was the deal. So you can imagine a, you know, fully packed plane. They used, you know, around 10, 10 to 15 minutes to process every single passenger, especially if there was a foreigner because they needed to, you know, present all sorts of documents. You actually need like an invitation to come into work and everything. Of course, it's a little bit easier for me because I hold a Norwegian passport, but all foreigners, they need an invitation to work or they need like a, a really good reason because Norway is basically not allowing any foreigners whatsoever. You know, it's, it's, it's become so strict. And of course, that was the whole reason why I had to go back in, to Norway in the first place is because they just changed these rules like foreigners. No, no, no. You really, um, you need a, like a bunch of documents just to get in. So what initially happened then is, um, yeah, I sat there for roughly, <laughs> for roughly three hours uh, in the, uh, <clears throat> in the uh, immigration, you know, just waiting for everybody, all the passengers to get processed. And then uh, finally, after around three hours, and that is, you know, just keep in mind that I've been sitting one hour at the air inside the airplane as well, just waiting to disembark. So we're talking four hours now since the plane actually landed. Um, they came and collected us and they took us to a testing area. At that time, I didn't really give a damn. So I was like last person, you know, I was just uh, just following the group, so to speak. Um, big mistake. I came like in the back of the line and they had to process everybody again to do the testing to register everything so that was roughly another an hour and a half before i actually got my test and they took me to the hotel so at that time you know the plane landed i believe around six o'clock in the evening i you know i crashed in my bed 11 o'clock at night so that is how you get into norway <laughs> And um, it, uh, yeah, to put it mildly, 
this is not something I want to do ever, ever again. So just to conclude or just to finish up this, uh, this story, you know, I'm not going to be talking too much about it, but basically I stayed at this hotel for seven days, you know, I was stupid enough to think, you know, that you had to stay inside your hotel, but I realized like two days prior to, you know, to checking out that uh, the government say you're actually allowed to leave your room. You, I could actually go and visit my mother. I could do whatever I wanted, basically. You just need to, you know, keep a distance of two meters. And I was quite shocked, you know, because then I don't really understand what is the whole point of they requiring you to be at a hotel in quarantine. Because I know they do, they did the same thing in Australia, yeah? And then they actually, you weren't allowed to, to leave your room or anything. Um, so I was really shocked and I was quite upset as well because, you know, I've stayed there, you know, I thought I was being a good citizen and obeying the, whatever the rules of the government and staying inside my hotel room, you know, isolated. And then uh, basically I learned after that, that no, you can go out, you can go to the store, you can do your, gro you know, buy some groceries or whatever you want, you know, you can go visit family as long as you keep your distance. I mean, so what's the point? Anyways, that is one of the many strange rules that, uh, that Norway has imposed right now. So basically the last day, um, upon checking out the hotel, you need to do another test. So keep in mind, this, these are four tests already because I had to do two tests prior in Brazil, prior to getting on the plane. One test upon arrival of Norway and one test after your quarantine, after your seven days. So of course I was negative, I got out and um, I was off to, to go and work offshore, you know, on the oil rigs. Um, of course, they also now have just to go and work off the oil rigs. And this is understandable because on an oil rig, you're really confined. You know, you imagine there are between 80 and 100 people, personnel working in a confined space. You know, it's basically just a small structure in the middle of the ocean. And uh, of course, everybody's going to have contact with each other. If you get an outbreak on a rig, then that's game over. You know, they basically shut down everything and just put everything, everybody into isolation. It's like, you know, being on a cruise ship or whatever. So, so basically they demand a test just prior to checking in, getting, getting on the helicopter or going to the rigs. So when I eventually arrived on the rig, I've done five tests in total, you know, the last, what, eight, nine days. So. I think my nostrils, my nose are, are like quite hardened, you know, that I don't feel anything anymore. But anyways, I, you know, I promised myself this is going to be the last time. And I, I told you also, there's like really strange rules as well, because when I got back again from work just a couple of days ago, you know, of course, there's no alcohol on the rigs and I really, I really, really wanted to have a beer, you know. So uh, I went up at the airport in Bergen. Uh, I went to order a beer and they asked, well, what do you want to eat? I says, no, no, I just want a beer. Yeah, but it's mandatory. I mean, with, uh, with alcohol, you need to order something to eat. So what do you mean? And, and it's actually another rule that they've put into place here in Norway is that you know, previously there was no alcohol whatsoever. Now they've actually opened up so they can serve alcohol, but only if you have a meal. I don't know if it's some way of the government to try and help out the restaurants or if it's their way of, okay, maybe we don't want people to just go and have a beer. You know, it's got, it's got to be something like a social event, like you sit down, you take your time, or I have no clue what is the deal behind it. But anyways, they don't serve alcohol if you don't order something from the menu, something to eat. And that is the entire country of Norway. So that is another strange rule. I don't understand. I think it's ridiculous, but you know, whatever. Enough about Norway. Uh, like I said, this is going to be the last time I want to do this, hopefully, or at least for a while. So what happened now is uh, I called my boss uh, again and I told her like, look, the next time I'm, I'm not coming back to Norway. I, I can't do this. You know, it's I, I can't do all of this every single time I go back back home to Brazil, then come back again here to work. I need to do this quarantine. 
I need to do like five, t five tests to come into the country. I need to do two tests to go back to Brazil. You know, I spend a fortune on plane tickets alone, but another small fortune in just testing, you know, and it's, it's ridiculous. And not only is the cost, but it's also the time and the stress and everything, just getting everything in order. So I told her, look, I'm going to stay now without pay for, you know, a couple, you know, a couple of months. That's it. When I get back, it's already like in the middle, nearing the end of July. So I'm just hoping that things have, you know, improved significantly. So, you know, but we'll see. Anyways, that is my plan. So when I left Brazil roughly three weeks ago, the current situation was everything was on lockdown. It was basically the whole country was on lockdown ever since, you know, I got back back home to Brazil in February until I actually left. Um, and I called a friend of mine just a couple of days ago. They actually, well, they open up, uh, but only from Monday to Fridays. And uh, of course, that doesn't really help me a lot uh, with my with my bed business, you know, with my bed and breakfast or my hotel. Um, so we've basically been closed this entire time. Yeah, my staff, everything. Uh, you know everything we basically ran out of money i'm paying basically paying everything out of my own pocket now and um, yeah that's how it's going to be for another couple of weeks um, but just yesterday i got some good news is now they're actually opening up uh, opening up you know slowly again and uh, it looks like we are allowed to you know receive guests at, uh, at the hotel once again you know i i'm doing some uh, you know refurbishing uh, upgrades at the hotel um, since it's closed you know I might as well just uh, you know take advantage and of the fact that we can't receive guests and I've been doing a lot of work at the at the bed, bed and breakfast just improving things and uh, just general maintenance the plan is like I have another two weeks until we're gonna open the doors officially again so hopefully everything will be finished my really big desire was, of course, to show you guys everything that I've done at the bed and breakfast, because personally, I think it's, it's, you know, it's become uh, really nice. It was kind of sad to leave because just when everything was finished, because, you know, I had construction, you know, I had guys working, you know, I, there was like at any given time, there was like 10, 15 workers at my hotel just doing everything. There were material, there were construction material, cement, um, bricks everywhere. You know, it was just like a big mess. And finally, when things, when they started to finish up things and you could actually see how everything turned out, it was, it became really, really nice. And I was really looking forward to share this with you guys. And of course, that's when I got my, my phone call from my boss and, and I really had to go. So I didn't really get to enjoy it. Um, but uh, that's how it is. But anyways, you know, they've been sending me photos. It looks awesome and I can't wait, wait to show you guys. But unfortunately, um, the reason why I'm also uploading this video now is just to give you a recap and just to tell you guys that it's gonna continue to be quiet for some time on this channel you know just because I, I can't really make any content while i'm here in norway because when i'm on the on the oil rigs when i'm over there i'm working i'm super busy uh, it's basically you know it's, it's a 12 hour shift when the shift is over i'm just super tired i go eat and then i go to bed so it's basically work eat and sleep that's that's all i basically do for two weeks you know that's that's my life. Uh, I'll be back in Brazil and I can't wait to kick start this channel. You know, hopefully we've come such a long way that, you know, we can basically start traveling again like normal people uh, without all this hassle. You know, I think the first step, at least what they're saying here in Norway and the EU is they're trying to get like a vaccine card. So if you had your, you know, your two doses or if you're fully vaccinated, I mean, it all depends on the vaccine, I guess. They're kind of different. But um, you get a vaccination card and you can travel anywhere within Europe, at least without uh, without doing any quarantine. I'm guessing since Brazil has had so many cases, it's been all over the news, like one of the worst infected countries. So I'm guessing that's going to take, you know, some 
time still, you know, just to uh, just to get better. But if I do get my vaccine before August, within August, you know, I think it I should be able to travel freely between the two countries. But we'll see. You know, it's like like I told you, the rules they change. You really need to be, you know, you you really need to to update yourself just to constantly do your research and, and find out what's changed and what are the current rules because they change all the time, basically. So, so basically, that's just a recap of what's been going on in my life these last couple of weeks. And uh, it's just been a, uh, it's been a, a mess. But, um, you know, it's like I've said in you know, almost all of my videos, it's, it's impossible to do any planning. It's impossible to, to plan ahead, you know, to because if you make plans for a couple of weeks in advance, guaranteed they're going to change because, you know, the situation has changed, you know. So, but anyways, so sorry, guys, for the really long delay. Uh, again. I'm, I'm gonna come back, you know, it's it's gonna happen. I'm gonna keep on posting uh, good stuff from Brazil from you guys. Also, I've been watching, uh, I've been keeping an eye on the channel. I know there's there's been a lot of comments and a lot of uh, questions and uh, on my, you know, previous uploads. I'm trying to answer all of you guys. Uh, there's been a bunch of questions. I've, I've not gotten around to to really answer all of you yet, but, you know, I think this next couple of days I'll, I'll probably be able to answer some of some of your questions or whatever concerns you might have. But anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in again. I do apologize again for the delay. Um, I hope you're all doing, you know, I hope you're all safe wherever you are in the world. And uh, remember to take care of each other. And also remember to subscribe so you can, uh, when I eventually do upload again, you'll be notified. And uh, I appreciate a thumbs up on my videos as well, you know, even if you don't like them, I still appreciate a thumbs up. All right, guys. So I'm going to go back and um, celebrate the rest of our Constitution Day here in Norway. In the meantime, stay safe, guys, and I'll catch you later. Bye bye. Ciao. Yeah, yeah.